Hi, I'm Kristen Casey here with my project partner, Brandon Hunter Hayden. And our goal today with this presentation is to expand awareness regarding emerging treatment options for sexual health and function. And this will be for those assigned either male or female at birth. So for the most part across genders. Um, let's see, let's go on to the first slide. Um, all right, we're going to start with a quick overview of the most common sexual concerns and their currently well known treatments. And from there, we're going to move on to new and lesser known options, um, which is the core of our presentation. Uh, first, specific to penis owners and then vagina owners, and then finally, uh, those indicated for both. And lastly, we'll have a quick uh, review of what I call worth a look interventions. And these are a handful of things that have shown promise or potential for sexual issues, um, albeit with limited studies as of yet, uh, but a solid amount of anecdotal evidence in most cases. So the next slide. Um, commonly no treatments for sexual health and function. So um, let's review really quickly the most common sexual concerns of first uh, penis owners, because those are gonna be um, primarily the big three, what I call um, ED, PE, and DE, or uh, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, and delayed ejaculation. Uh, that last one taken to an extreme can of course be anorgasmia. Uh, and then for vagina owners, we have the most common concerns being um, also anorgasmia, um, as well as other orgasmic difficulties, low arousal, loss of interest, decreased sensation. Then there are issues of vaginal laxity, dryness, incontinence, and of course, vaginismus. Um, and I do want to add that painful sex is, of course, uh, dyspareunia, a very common complaint, just not entirely within the scope of this presentation. So we're not going to be covering any pain treatments here. Uh, maybe one, a little bit of one. Um, okay, so since our audience is really well-versed in these current well-known treatments, we've grouped them here in paragraph form. In the following slides, I will separate out the conditions and bullet point the new correlating treatments a, a little bit more clearly. But for now, um, these recommendations for penis centers, I just wanna say, um, you're all familiar with these, I'm sure. Um, I just wanna mention, I'm not a fan of the squeeze technique. I think there are issues with it. So I'd like to see that be phased out. Um, personally, numbing sprays also, I feel like, um, only as a last resort, because there are many other better options, which we'll talk about. Um, and then uh, uh, Kegels. I wanna mention, I think Kegels are fantastic for penis owners. I do not like them for uh, premature ejaculation issues. And we'll get into that more. Um, there's a type of Kegel called the reverse Kegel that I like for premature ejaculation issues. Um, for vagina owners, um, let's see, the common recommendations here, I'm gonna say these are all very effective. Um, for uh, various concerns. However, there are many more available. So um, we're really excited about showing you those today because they're, you know, vagina owners are getting shortchanged a little bit. So let's go on to the next slide. All right, so new and lesser known options for penis owners. In the interest of time, I wanna point out that I've grouped ED and DE together here. Um, mainly because there's a lot of overlap in regard to beneficial treatments. Though feel free to email me with questions or for more detailed breakdown um, if uh, you're dealing with one versus the other, because um, I can get more specific. Um, let's see, so starting with PT-141, pept it's a peptide. Very excited about this because um, first of all, it works for a majority um, of the uh, penis owners who've tried it. Um, also, by the way, it does um, uh, have a beneficial effect for vagina owners, but for penis owners here, it's, a, it's an injectable subcutaneous, it's sim simple to self-administer, it's done situationally, so usually two to four hours before sexual activity, because um, it takes a little while to, to um, take effect. Um, and then, uh, uh, there is a side effect of a little bit of nausea for a minority of um, people who've tried it. And then um, for an even smaller minority, one in five, I think uh, kind of a severe nausea, but it does go away. Um, there are very few people who say the nausea is so bad that they, that they wouldn't do it again. Um, so what it does is it helps, it, it works in the part of the brain that triggers arousal. So it, it, it it's, um, helps with desire, it helps with arousal, it helps with erections, and it helps with orgasm. And um, it's not super cheap, but it's easily available online. And it's tremendously beneficial in mild, moderate, and severe cases. And um, I've had a lot of experience with this in my clients. Um, and for those who have a lot of factors contributing to their ED or DE, um, you know, you're talking age, surgeries, uh, high blood pressure, medical issues. You know, I've had clients that have everything that could be going 
wrong, so to speak, going, going wrong, they haven't had an orgasm or an erection in a year or more, um, doing PT one for one with, uh, and, and maybe not having any reaction sometimes to that first, and then adding a little bit of a Viagra booster, like a, like a, a 25% of a normal um, dose of Viagra. And those two together um, turn everything around. I've had clients start having penetrative sex and orgasms again immediately with their first dose of a combination PT-141 with Viagra. So um, I really uh, hope that this, the word gets out about this because it's just been a godsend for a lot of my clients. Another thing that's been really beneficial, um, not for everyone, but uh, for those penis owners who, um, who it does work for, it does work well and it can be a godsend is shockwave therapy, which sounds worse than it is. It's not actually a painful treatment uh, for penis owners. <laughs> for vagina owners, it can be a little uncomfortable, uh, but there's less studies about that and there's a fewer places offering it to vagina owners anyway. Um, but it's a, a series of treatments. So it's not done situationally. Um, it's about blood flow, creating um, uh, new blood vessels. And also, and this is the best part, helping to reverse some of the damage that can come from the um, tissues from high blood pressure. Uh, uh, men, I've had clients with lifelong blood pressure have permanent damage and they're, you know, for the most part, most of these men aren't ever gonna have a full heart erection again, but with shockwave therapy, they might. Um, so it can actually reverse some of that damage. Um, I want to say about half of the people, I have to check my, yeah, about half of the, the penis owners who try shockwave therapy say they receive benefits from it. I will say that it does seem like the skill of the technician is a big factor. I've had clients see a few different technicians and experience tremendous results with one. And then when they can tell that, that the person is new, not, they, and there could be a bit of a you know um, placebo effect or, or uh, what have you, but uh, but the science is also there with shockwave therapy. There's a lot of science behind it. Um, so uh, another simple um, treatment for mild to moderate cases in particular uh, would be some over the counter herbs like ohimbine, horny gut weed, beetroot, tongkat ali. There are others. These are just for the biggest ones. Um, and they all have solid science behind them, tremendous anecdotal evidence, easily um, available, affordable, and often found in a combination. So um, that can be tremendously helpful. Uh, Yohimbine, I will say if uh, any clients are taking Yohimbine that they do need to cycle off of it because while it does um, improve blood flow and arousal and performance, um, and it boosts testosterone, it boosts your body's ability to produce testosterone, it can, if you don't cycle, cycle off of it, eventually over time, reduce your body's ability to produce testosterone. And then you're you know, obviously having the counter effect that you want. So you just have to be careful. And of course, check with your doctor because um, uh, it can uh, raise, I think yohimbine in particular, or, or perhaps even two or three of these can increase blood pressure. So you wanna check with your doctor, even though it's over the counter. Um, another over the counter antihistamine periactin um, has been shown to help reverse or overcome DE or anorgasmia that's caused specifically by uh, SSRI use. So if you have a client who really likes his antidepressant um, and doesn't want to change it or get off of it, but it's really affecting his ability to orgasm, periactin can often times um, be the only thing, you know, that's all he needs to, to overcome it. It just has this, that effect. Um, and astrozole to lower estrogen and cabergoline to lower prolactin. Any client who's presenting with ED or DE um, that is not for some other major obvious reason, but in general, they should be having their prolactin and estrogen checked because if it's a little high in a penis owner, um, that can be inhibiting orgasm, it can be um, inhibiting erection and um, prolactin in particular, um, and not just erection and, and um, ejaculation, but uh, uh, refractory period. So if you have a client, like I get clients who just want, they're not having any dysfunctional issues, but they just want to maximize their sex life. And maybe um, as they get older, they no longer can have sex twice in one afternoon because the refractory period gets longer. Well, lowering prolactin can actually affect that, can actually, um, the, the, the lower the prolactin, the shorter the refractory period. So um, it's just another consideration. Um, the combination epimorphine to dalafil and oxytocin is a wonderful co uh, compounded combo um, that works on a few different levels. To dalafil, of course, is Cialis. Epimorphine and oxytocin both um, contribute to um, relaxing the smooth muscle and um, um, 
uh, 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 boosting dopamine. When you put the three of them together, um, they can actually be really beneficial for someone experiencing mild to moderate ED or DE. Um, and, uh, you know, just talk to your doctor about getting that. A lot of doctors don't know about it, but you tell them about it, they research it, they can call that in for you. Um, nitric oxide boosters, again, about blood flow. Um, L-arginine is the most popular one. There's a couple others, but these are different formulations that you can easily find uh, um, over the counter, again, for mild to moderate um, cases of ED and DE. Um, and nitric oxide is in all of your cells. So it's actually um, just uh, for overall good health. Um, premature ejaculation, I deal with this a lot. Um, and one of the things I wanna say is that um, I don't think it's well known enough that tight pelvic floor muscles or, or, or pelvic floor muscle tension can really be a major contributor here. And, you know, a lot of clients are in a constant state of tension, whether from injury or just, um, you know, it's psychogenic or uh, uh, for a variety of reasons, maybe they're, maybe they're not constantly in a state of tension, although some are, maybe they're, maybe they're um, becoming tense and anxious um, uh, in the course of their interaction. And so they're starting to clench those muscles um, too soon in the arousal process, and that um, pushes them through to orgasm too soon. Uh, but the pelvic floor is a major contributor to, to PE. And so um, prescribing Kegels, while it can be really beneficial for ED and DE, even though it's not on the list, um, it can be really beneficial for a variety of reasons. For PE, it can actually make the issue worse. So what you wanna do is teach them reverse Kegels, which is, um, if you're explaining Kegels by, um, oh, tense those muscles that you tense when you stop the urine flow, well, reverse Kegels are um, relax or actually push out those muscles to start up the urine flow. Um, it's a little more complicated than that. I actually have like a four page instructional sheet on how to do reverse Kegels because you wanna do them carefully. You wanna push gently um, and uh, teaching someone who's never done them, it's, it's, it's a process but it's all about relaxing those muscles, which can be tremendously helpful for cases of PE. So, um, and pelvic floor therapy, you know, there are um, physical therapists who specialize in the pelvic floor. And in Austin, we have one of the most, the best in the state, maybe Sullivan Physical Therapy. And, and the level of knowledge they have about how your tight pelvic floor muscles are affecting your diaphragm and your posture. And they told one of my clients recently that he was um, very likely to end up with a hernia if he um, didn't uh, loosen his, uh, relax his pelvic floor muscles. And they were explaining how it was affecting everything from his breathing to his posture, to his sleep. And that was just like in the first 10 minutes of his exam. And so uh, I think it's really, really important to encourage our clients to seek out a good pelvic floor muscle therapist. Um, um, and uh, there are things that I, as an intimacy coach, can um, help gauge uh, as far as how tense they might be, but I will always then send them to a specialist myself. Um, the Thera one is a great way for self-administered pelvic floor muscle therapy. I had a client, um, one in particular, who was just very um, uh, uh, proactive, and uh, he experienced tremendous help by uh, using this device anally as a pressure point sort of massage tool to release some of that tension that you can't get at any other way. And of course, um, uh, uh, pelvic floor muscle uh, specialists um, will have their own methods of, of, of doing that as well. Um, thyroid regulation is something we don't talk about a lot. Um, thyroid can... Um, Thyroid regulation can, can turn around some cases of PE uh, because a lot of uh, clients with PE have hyperactive thyroid. And then um, conversely, a lot of clients with um, ED or DE have hypoactive thyroid. So regulating the thyroid for any of those conditions and getting your thyroid tested is the first thing you wanna do and then finding out if you're a little high or a little low. Um, so you wanna find a really qualified doctor because um, a lot of them don't actually know um, they, they don't know as much about thyroid um, issues and regulation as, as they, they think that that uh, normal thyroid function is, is, a, is a wide window and it's actually pretty narrow. If you're just a little bit outside of it, one way or another, it can affect your sexual function. So a lot of people don't know that. Um, and Prilogy is not available in the States yet, but um, hopefully it will be at some point. It is a, um, uh, if you're going to be prescribing um, an SSRI to someone with PE, um, you know, you have to be aware that there are side effects and SSRIs aren't, you know, um, 
I think you have to be careful prescribing medication that has a lot of side effects, especially SSRIs. And so if somebody has a really bad case of PE and, and, and that's, that tends to be a lot of doctors only recommendation, well, Prilogy is one that just has fewer side effects than the other and tends to actually be really helpful for PE. So uh, you can get it online. I mean, you mention it to your clients and, and perhaps they can look into it themselves. Hopefully it will be, um, you'll be able to get it through a doctor here at some point. But, okay, so next slide. Um, let's see, new and less known options for vagina owners. Okay, so this is exciting. The first thing I wanna say is to, bioidentical testosterone has been around for a very long time. It's prescribed, um, it's approved for uh, penis owners, obviously, um, and has been for a long time, but there are, uh, the anecdotal evidence that it's beneficial to women too is overwhelming. And, and any doctor worth his salt is prescribing it to um, his uh, clients with vaginas. Um, if they get, you know, as, it's, as their testosterone, just like for men is declining with age, um, even though women don't have as much, uh, it does decline with age and it does affect our muscle tone and our ability to build and maintain muscle in our, um, our sex drive and, and uh, to a very large degree. And so while uh, you hear people talk all the time about oh, finding the female Viagra, the truth is, I don't know if there is a, such a thing, I doubt it, as a female Viagra, but the closest thing we have to it, in my opinion, is bioidentical testosterone. And so um, any woman who's experiencing any sort of age-related um, uh, desire issues or lubrication issues or response issues should absolutely be getting her testosterone tested by a qualified doctor and considering bioidentical testosterone that just hardly has any side effects. And the ones that it does have are reversible and minor and usually just because she's maybe taking a tiny bit too much because you know women don't need that much. Um, but it is, it is tremendously beneficial for issues of desire and arousal and orgasm. Um, Lotus daily to Dalafil also along the same lines, all about blood flow. Orgasms are all about blood flow and um, to Dalafil in a low dose has like no real side effects um, of significance, is nothing but beneficial and over time just continues to help increase blood flow and um, improve orgasmic ability. And, you know, a lot of doctors know this, the science is there, but just not a lot of them have caught up with it. So. Um, it's definitely something to consider for um, particularly uh, vagina owning client, clients as they age and, and the blood flow is reducing. Um, vaginal Botox, there's a fantastic study about um, treating vaginismus with vaginal Botox and hopefully there will be more, but it was incredibly successful. It's easy to find online. I think I've linked to it in the links. Um, but up until now, you know, dilators and surrogate partner therapy both have tremendous um, success rates, but they are time consuming. And one of them is very time consuming. The other is, is um, you know, known to be kind of painful and, and also time consuming. And so, um, you know, uh, I don't know enough about the side effects of Botox to say how much I would want it injected into, um, you know, my genital tissues. But if I had vaginismus, I certainly would want to know about the option to do that. So we definitely need to be keeping that in mind for those clients, letting them know that there are more than one or two options now for that. Um, the clitoral therapy device, this is where we talk about um, female pain. The clitoral therapy device slash vacuum stimulator, um, there's a few different kinds out there. The, the Laura DiCarlo Bacchi, I guess you pronounce it. Um, uh, I, I happen to think that that one is great, but it's a um, it's a vaginal stimulator or a clitoral stimulator that is not inserted, so it's non-invasive. And it was studied with um, a group of irradiated cervical cancer patients who are having issues that just ran the gamut from pain and dryness and discomfort to complete lo loss of desire. And you know, a lot of these women could not have any penetration, um, but they but they needed some stimulation there to get the blood flowing. And so the study was done and it's linked in the links and it's just fascinating. And the, and the recovery rates, um, not just of um, health and lubrication and, and tissue rejuvenation, but sexual arousal and desire and orgasm were just off the chart. So that was a really exciting study. And this is a really, um, I think it's a great device and it actually, you know, if we're gonna be prescribing or recommending vibrators for anyone with orgasmic, um, issues or arousal issues, uh, we definitely need to be mentioning the vacuum stimulator because, um, I mean, for some women, it simply works better, you know, it feels better um, and it's a little bit different. 
And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, a lot of people don't even know that that option is there, that, that it's a thing that exists. Um, okay, so two more things for vet, vagina owners. Radio frequency, um, a lot of science behind it as far as treating um, vaginal tissue, um, rejuvenating vaginal tissue, tightening up vaginal tissue. It's been fantastic for improving continence. It's something, it's not, it's not cheap by any means. It's close to $3,000 for three treatments. Um, but I think it lasts a year or two. Um, and the, uh, the rates of improved incontinence are, are very high. Um, also with that, as the, you're rejuvenating those tissues and tightening up those tissues, um, it's increasing sensation. So um, sexual response um, has also been uh, reportedly uh, greatly improved for some, uh, um, some users. Um, and then the fractional laser known as the Mona Lisa Touch, um, the uh, percentage, the majority of women who do that um, uh, experience benefits um, mostly in regard to um, lubrication and, and vaginal atrophy. So um, frequently for um, perimenopausal or men menopausal uh, women, um, as long as they haven't gone too long into menopause, because like if they've gone 10 years, um, rejuvenation is maybe not that likely or possible. Uh, you do want to be careful with this one. Um, unlike the radio frequency, this one is a laser and it can, um, if not done well or correctly, you know, can, can leave burns. Uh, the radio frequency is, is um, I think it would be impossible to really harm um, uh, harm a, um, a, a woman's genitals with that. Uh, but moving on to the next slide. Um, okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I've already discussed all of these things. I just think it's nice to know that there's a whole list of things um, that most people don't know about that work for both penis owners and vagina owners. And, uh, you know, most of them to really great effect. So, and then of course, there's a little picture of, of what the shockwave therapy is like, because when you tell someone, oh, have you heard of shockwave therapy for your genitals, you know, that they're, they're they're likely not going to be able to picture what, what that looks like in their head. And um, anyway, so that's kind of a fair idea of what it looks like. Uh, okay, so the last, let's go to the last slide here. Um, yeah, so I won't make, waste much time here. I just wanted to um, cover all bases in the interest of um, A, particularly stubborn cases. Um, and then also uh, for brave clients who are open to self-experimentation and who want to help add to the anecdotal evidence, um, most of this stuff has some science behind it or a lot of anecdotal evidence or a little bit of both. Um, some of it in particular for vagina owners, um, the um, cannabis lube, red light therapy, and certain strains of marijuana ingested um, uh, before sexual activity. I mean, those are all um, proven. The red light therapy, um, there's science, there's solid science behind it. But the cannabis lube and the um, certain strains of marijuana um, for sex, I mean, the, there's so much anecdotal evidence behind those that I think that we're doing a disservice to our vagina owning clients if we don't mention that that can be really beneficial as far as um, increasing sensation and improving the arousal response. Uh, let's see, I will just say um, the P shot, that's um, the P shot and the O shot, you know, some clients say that that's really helped um, improve their sexual response or sensation. Others say they, you know, it was a waste of money. Um, but uh, the science, there is science behind it. Um, and I will say, is there anything else I want to, the BPA detox is really interesting. There's a study, I think I've linked to it also, um, where a, a population of people with very high rates of BPA um, all did a detox and um, the rates of sexual dysfunction plummeted um, directly after the detox. So I found that very interesting. Everyone has BPA in them from plastics. It's, it's very common. It's just probably not top, um, you know, the levels are relatively low, but for some people more than others, you know, so it's just definitely worth looking into. I mean, if I had ED and I couldn't figure out, um, you know, everything I was trying wasn't working all that well, I mean, I would want to know about a BPA detox. Um, also, I want to do, um, give a nod to yoga because I definitely, I get so many clients that um, have tight pelvic floor muscles and tight hips. Not only does loosening the hips enable um, better movement and more pleasure for yourself and for your partner, but once you get those pelvic floor muscles relaxed, especially for my clients who have bad cases of PE, yoga, uh, regular yoga practice can help keep them relaxed and it's um, just tremendously beneficial and you know it's you have to get in the habit of it but it's something that I strongly recommend to my clients and I just think it's important to remember that. 
Um, I don't think there's anything else here. I will say last thing, vaginal ozone therapy is a simple and inexpensive, inexpensive treatment um, that can be beneficial for some vagina owners who just are um, either self-conscious about their natural bodily odors, which um, hopefully, you know, we can get them passed. But uh, until then, um, some women smell stronger than others, and it can help eliminate odor brief, uh, temporarily, but also help balance the pH. So if you're prone to yeast infections or bacterial infections, and a lot of women unfortunately are, they get them all the time, and it's just a real hassle. Um, vaginal ozone therapy um, is, you know, 30, it's like 30 minutes for $30 or so, I forget, but it's inexpensive, it's, it's easily found, and it really does, um, there's a lot of science behind it, it really can help, and so for those clients who um, just uh, uh, need some attention to their um, uh, vaginal health, um, it's worth noting that that's an option. So I think that kind of covers everything. Um, I hope that was beneficial. Brandon, do you have anything you want to add? There are, again, links to everything. And all of these are studies. There are maybe two links out of these last two pages that aren't, I couldn't find a good study. So I just linked to some information um, about the um, topic. But for most of these, those are some, those are all studies that I've found that I thought were very valid and, and worth looking at. So thanks. Thank you so much.